So, you want to build a self-balancing vehicle. Well, you came to the right place. Firstly, uh, thank you for using the, the VESC uh, self-balancing app. It's super cool to see lots of people riding around on this code that I wrote. It blows my mind, and there's so many cool builds, and I'm excited to see what you came up with. Now, I'm going to be breaking this video into multiple parts so that it's not super long and each of the videos can really be focused on what you want to hear. However, if there's questions that you can't get the answers to from these videos or you just can't figure something out, or if you just want to chat, we've got a Telegram chat room with a lot of really cool people who will try their best to answer your questions. And there will be a link for that down in the description below. Now, things are going to change. Progress is awesome. That is a good thing. But... I'll try to explain things such that you will hopefully understand the changes in the future. But regardless, I am using Vestool 2.0.5 and firmware version 5.0.1 if you want to follow along exactly. Now, before you jump into setting up the self-balancing part, you're going to need to configure your motors. And I'm not going to be covering that in any of these videos. You need to have your motor running and you should be using FOC and some sort of censored mode. That way you'll have really good control at low speed, which is what you need to balance. The other thing you're going to need is an IMU. An IMU is an, inertial, is an inertial measurement unit. It contains a gyro sensor, an accelerometer. There's going to be a separate video on setting that all up. But something that confuses a lot of people when they have questions about is where to connect it and what else you can connect. If you have a vest that doesn't have an internal IMU, you're going to have to use the ports that a Bluetooth module would normally use and so you can't connect your phone and an IMU at the same time unless you have a built-in internal IMU. Now there are some exceptions, but this is kind of like a general rule. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is what we're not going to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to be covering hardware and motors and stuff like that. I've seen, you know, two vests, one motor, one motor, two vests, belt drive, all kinds of crazy stuff. You can talk about that in the chat room. Now, first thing we're going to do is enable the balance app. So you go to apps, settings, general, change this app to balance. And when you do that, you will now get your balance app in the side over here. You can click on that, and there it is. Now, something you may not notice is these little question mark icons next to every setting. That will give you a pop-up with helpful information. So you use those and read as much as you can. It will hopefully answer your questions. There's also this big bike graph at the bottom with cool information on it, but don't let it distract you from this text below it which is actually really helpful. There's a lot of information there that you're going to need to look at. Now, the first one here is the state. Now, the state can be fault. Now, this fault is different from the fault that you might see here. This is the fault for the motor controller, and that runs entirely separate from the balance app. And the balance app has its own faults. Now, the state will sometimes say fault, and it will sometimes say dead. Now, if it's a fault, it just means it needs to be in a non-fault state, and then it can start running again. However, if it's dead, you're going to have to do a power cycle to get it to run again. Now, the only setting that can cause dead is this one right over here that is labeled causes dead state. And you can disable it by setting it to anything over than 0.95. But I recommend you leave it enabled because it is an important safety feature. The next term is tilt back. That is the only way that the board will let you know that you need to slow down. Now it'll do that by raising the front of the board and kind of pushing you back a little bit and trying to slow you down. Now there's a number of different tilt backs you can set. And like everything else, we're going to talk about that in another video. Now the other thing is PID. That is a math formula that you're going to plug numbers into and that is going to tell the motor how to balance basically. There are also switches, the ADC switches, and you can connect wires or switches to those pins and it'll uh, 
turn the wheel on and off basically using these faults mechanisms and there will be a video on it. The other thing is these units. So here this is degrees. Uh, there is degrees per second. We got amps. We got volts and we even have hertz over here. Uh, we got ERPMs, we got milliseconds, we got all kinds of units, and that's what those numbers mean. I think I covered all of them. Now, lastly, you should experiment with these settings because, you know, there might be general settings that will work for a lot of vehicles, but it's hard to get something that will work for every vehicle. Some vehicles are really just weird outliers, and you also may be able to figure out something that runs better than what I've got set up, which some people have already done. The other thing is safety. Now, you want to make sure that your board does not run into somebody else and hurt them. You also don't want to hurt yourself. I've already seen some scrapes and bruises and bloody elbows, and... I mean, a small injury might be slightly entertaining, but I don't want anybody to get seriously hurt. So please wear a helmet. Your brain is your most important asset. Protect it. Wear a helmet. If you're smart enough to set up a self-balancing vehicle, you should be smart enough to wear a helmet. And that's all. I will set up a playlist with all the videos, and you can click through all of them. Yay!